today's episode, we will talk about the machine translation, what it is, and how the web developers could use it for their benefit. As we know, language translation has been always a very difficult task to accomplish. We have humans dedicated to these tasks, but with the uh, improvement in machine CPU speed and the RAM and everything else, uh, the capacity of computers were uh, able to solve more difficult problems. First, uh, computers learned how to play checkers, then they learned how to play chess, and then computers started to translate even human language. And um, if we look at the history of the machine translation, uh, first uh, machine translators were pretty rudimentary, doing very specific and uh, uh, not, uh, not complex translations, and they were mostly rule-based. Uh, the rule based, if you look back in the, in the beginning of the internet, uh, when we had uh, all the rage, the search engines, but even when Google and Facebook weren't around, there was no, there was Amazon by the way, but uh, there was uh, the first search engine which was Alta Vista, and uh, they developed their own uh, language translator, it was called Babelfish. And Babelfish was uh, the first generation machine translator who was using the rule based approach. Uh, this approach essentially is the combination of two dictionaries, one dictionary in a source language and the other dictionary in the, in the, in the foreign language. And the program was trained to, uh, to apply linguistic rules in one, in one language to, come to extract the meaning of the, of the words and, and hopefully make the readable sentences. And that approach was uh, rather fast, but uh, as we know, each language has an exception, and uh, syntaxes and rules are not uh, a good indicator that the machine would understand the, the meaning of the sentence and uh, produce a good result. So, going forward, uh, back into back in 2000, let's say five, six, uh, Google was the, a, a bigger search engine at the day. It replaced Alta Vista in popularity, and uh, they developed their own machine translator. Uh, the reason being, Google started doing. Uh, going into a machine translation world is because uh, Google is the multilingual, uh, multinational search engine and they deal with all sorts of content uh, overseas, not just in English. And therefore, in order, in order to index it well and make sure uh, the search engine optimization specialists are not gaming the system and taking the advantage of the search results in the, in the search query, uh, they developed their own machine translator to make sure they understand what the spam content is and what is not. And therefore, they developed their own rule-based machine translator, and then they innovated since Google has more resources than any other ordinary software company. They have more servers, more uh, CPU power, and therefore they made um, a statistical approach. So this is, was the next wave of innovation when they <coughs> said, listen, the, the rule-based translation is great, but uh, what about the odd cases, right? When the translation is not that clear, or it was written in jargon, or with some uh, mistakes in a, in a source language, we have to still convey the right meaning to the foreign language. And therefore, they started accepting those corrections and built the index based on a database size of the correct translations. There was this purification uh, of purification engine to, to, that would allow the system to learn on the mistakes and produce uh, subsequently produce better and better results. Um, Bing and other companies started following and uh, statistical uh, machine translation was pretty popular, just to name a few. There are some other competitors in, in this field in, even nowadays, uh, Yandex, the Russian search engine, uh, prompt the online dictionary, Abbey, and a handful of others. Then there was, of course, a combination of two, some kind of hybrid approach, rule-based plus statistical translation. But today, in, especially in 2017, there was a big news that uh, uh, machine translation really started to um, produce indistinguishable uh, results uh, that the uh, person could not un uh, understand whether it was translated by human or by machine. So called Alan, tu Alan Turing tests, when um, you ask the question and the machine and the human try to get both the answers. And the person who is questioning cannot understand what was the, that was the answer by the machine or by the human. 
So the mach machine can trick a human into believing it is a human. Therefore, that was the first endeavor into this uh, 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 really complex thing such as human language. And the machine, for the most common languages, started producing astonishing results. The, the quality was uh, um, indistinguishable from human. Any bilingual person, especially if, not, if he is not trained or doing any specific uh, complicated technical, technical work, would be amazed how, how good the quality was. So, briefly, just to give you uh, a gist of what these uh, neu uh, neurological networks are, they work in, uh, in, the same, in the same way the human brain works. Uh, there is a dendrites that transmit this, this electrical signal, and uh, uh, the signals are in, in the part of the brain, they, they form the connections, and they submit uh, different signals, and in the end, your brain makes a, a decision, yes or no. So this is what it ultimately comes down to. And based on this, um, the model is built like this. It has the source ingredient, which is a model, we scientists create the list of uh, keywords that we uh, consider will be taken into consideration. And then we assign the coefficients. Sometimes it could be, in the beginning, the random, random values, those, uh, those ingredients. And then the machine starts going back and forth in a learning cycle. And those coefficients are being adjusted. And therefore, uh, it's called the iteration, the ages. And the more ages you, you, you built in the system, the more resources you have, since this is a rather a computational approach. Uh, the machine, uh, uh, the artificial intelligence becomes more and more uh, precise. So it makes more, uh, it forecasts are being, um, being, being carried out with a greater precision. So this approach was trained by playing chairs, then the, the, uh, the company behind this uh, artificial intelligence built uh, uh, a game engine to build, uh, to win the best player in a game of Go. It won a handful of, of those games and drawing the rest, never getting a loss from the best open source uh, chess, chess engine. And obviously in the language, when we train this neural, net, net, neural networks just for the sake of doing the machine translation, it created astonishing results and a human being was was really duped to believing that this was done by the human, or maybe, or maybe a less skilled human, not the, not the, the best tra translator in the world, but still, still. So, and that application is uh, really, uh, really applicable to the website translation world when we deal with uh, lots of uh, search engine optimized content, landing pages, uh, articles, blog posts, and we do not really have time and budget to outsource that to a prof uh, professional translation agency, but we do have budget to employ the API and uh, I mean, to, to do the work through the API and extract those translations from this uh, top three language, uh, language translation providers. And the key players I would like to go over today uh, in, this, in this market are Yandex, Bing, and Google. I created this table to just to give you some comparison shopping and understand uh, what these companies are offering, and uh, you can take in your your lessons and make a decision for yourself. So in the, in the first uh, in the first line, I drew a free tier. In the beginning, all these machine translators were a free tier. When we started developing our first uh, version of uh, the plugin back in 2008. Um, there was no Yandex translator, but there was Google, and Google was free in the beginning, believe it or not. It was, there was no caps, no limits. You just uh, try the API, and you develop your applications, and uh, it was really fabulous back in the day. But like everything great, uh, is eventually the fairy tale got ended, and uh, Google started imposing the fees. So now, even even the free tier is not being offered by Google anymore. They have a flat fee. Yandex has no free tier. Uh, Bing by uh, Azure Cloud from Microsoft still has the free tier up to 2,000, uh, up to 2 million characters, which is roughly 1,000 pages, and Google doesn't. Next, if we look at the pricing uh, table, uh, price per million characters is $15 on Yandex, $10 on Bing, 
and the $20 on Google. Uh, when it comes down to quality, where would you expect better quality? I would say, in my experience, I would expect better quality in Google because uh, they partially have now offering the neuro, neuro networks in their language pairs. But these are not all the languages, only the most common ones. Spanish, Russian, French, uh, Japanese, and so on. Uh, Bing also is catching up. Uh, they're also offering this, this service. But Yandex still is being stuck in a statistical and rule-based rule world of the machine translation. So uh, I presume their quality is not so great. But on the good, on the good side, Yandex has uh, 95 languages. And out of those 95 languages, they have some pretty unique languages that nobody else has. They, they're mostly related to parts of the Russia that when they have this, this uh, hot countries and uh, municipalities speak, speaking those languages. and they started coding, coding them in to make sure they, they can ac accommodate a larger uh, portion of population. Bing has 60 languages in their pipeline, and Google has uh, 100 plus. So in this comparison shopping, we, we chose to, to stay with Bing internally, because we are first able to offer a free tier to our, to our users, to our clients. Uh, the quality also getting better through the neural networks, and the price per million characters is still the most affordable on the market. Uh, the only drawback is there are 60 languages, but uh, if you think about it critically, uh, we hardly know any, any websites or applications that are even deployed in 60 languages. Nowadays, it's still around 10 to 5 languages, to the max, because the more languages, uh, it's, there's a stats that the, if you want to access the 80% of world's uh, population, you have to translate your application in just 10 languages. So uh, if you really try to watch your, you watch your budget and, and timeline, just stick with the 10 languages for now, the most popular. So uh, this, is, this is all I wanted to, to share with you so you can make a, a, big dis, a, a better decision on which uh, translation API to use. And in the next uh, series of videos, I'm planning to give you um, the screencast on how to sign up and how to deploy your first application in any of those uh, translation APIs. So if you watch this video to the very end, uh, I would like to thank you for that. Uh, give us some likes, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for the uh, future updates and learn how to make your web application multilingual and successful. Stay tuned. And my name is Alex. I'm the founder of Translation Cloud. Thank you. Bye-bye.